Hello everybody, welcome to another Forbidden 3D Prints video. Today we are going to replace the Sega Saturn SRAM with an FRAM chip on a VA2 motherboard revision. For those who don't know, the FRAM chip is a non-volatile memory and it doesn't require a battery to store the save games like the original SRAM does. This is a very simple mod to do, but it does require to be careful in a few steps. I'll start by checking if this chip is glued with the resin, because if it is, it can be tricky when trying to desolder it. Since I couldn't really tell if there's a resin blob or not, I'm just going to try and remove the chip with hot air. I have my hot air set to 450 Celsius and airflow set to maximum. Well, it seems that it doesn't want to come out, so I'll just go ahead and assume that it's stuck with the resin blob. The alternative way to remove the chip is to use a flush cutter and cut all the chip legs. But in this case, I think it's the most safe to avoid any damage to the sucker board and pads. I'll just go ahead and use the flush cutters and slowly cut the legs one by one, trying not to lift the legs while cutting so I don't rip any pads. After the legs are all cut, I lift them up in order to confirm that none is still attached. We'll have to use some force to remove the chip, and if any legs are still attached, they'll certainly rip the pads. To remove the chip, I use my flat pliers to get underneath the chip, and use it as a lever to lift it from the board. My pliers are not as flat as I would like, but they do the trick. And we can confirm that this chip was indeed stuck with a red resin blob. The next step is to remove the pins that are still stuck to the pads. With a flat soldering iron tip, this is quite easy to achieve. Just slide the tip on the pads and the legs will get stuck to the soldering iron. Now let's go ahead and remove the old solder from the pads with some solder wick. We are now ready to start the installation of the FRAM chip. But first we need to raise two legs on the chip that are going to be connected to a capacitor later on. The legs that need to be raised are legs number 22 and 28. Be careful not to raise the legs too much or there's the risk of breaking them and the mod will become considerably hard to do. Next, we line the chip the best we can and dab a bit of solder on the extremity legs. This way, we can secure the chip while soldering the other legs, but if needed be, it's still easy to move the chip in the right place. Now that the chip is in place and all the legs align with the pads, we can start soldering. Let's make sure there is enough flux on all the legs. I like to solder on an outwards motion from the leg to the end of the pad. It makes the solder points look really good. After all the legs are soldered, we'll move on to solder the two wires from legs 22 and 28 onto the capacitor. We can only see the capacitor's legs. The actual capacitor is on the other side of the board. I always prefer to prepare the wires with a bit of solder before I solder them in place. It's much more easy to solder and the job looks better. The place where the wires are going to be connected are those two solder points with the white semicircles on the side. Pin number 28 connects to the point on the left side and pin number 22 connects on the right. Everything is ready now and all is left is check if the points are making a good connection. For that I use a multimeter in continuity mode and put one probe on the top of the chip legs and the other on the end of the pad. In this case all legs are making a good connection and we are ready to test if the Saturn recognizes the available memory. Let's turn on the Sega Saturn. And since we don't have the battery installed, we need to go through the date and time setup. After that, we enter the Saturn BIOS menu, and we can see that our FRAM was installed successfully, and it's recognizing the new available memory. 
For the final test, I'll play a quick game of Sega Rally so we can confirm that the games are being saved in the memory. Now that we play the game, let's confirm if a Sega Rally saved file is present in the memory. And there you go, we have the confirmation that everything is working and our job is done. If you need a tutorial on how to install the FRAM on different motherboard revisions, check our Sega Saturn Mods playlist. If you're looking to buy the FRAM chip, visit the link in the description. Feel free to like, subscribe and leave any comments if you have questions or suggestions. Thanks for watching another Forbidden 3D Prints video and I'll see you in the next one.